everybody, Logan Jr. Chef here, and thank you so much for ordering my box on Mad Apron. And today we are going to be cooking the cold soba noodles with Korean style beef rib. This is going to be super delicious, super flavorful. So let's get started. The first thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to have to take your beef rib and get it in a suitable marinating container. Here's the beef ribs. Now the thing about the Korean style beef short ribs is that they're cut um, differently. They're cut across the bone, which is um, really interesting. Now, some of the things about this meat is it can be a little tough, so don't be discouraged if your meat comes out a little tough. That's just how the meat is. Um, also, you know that bone in is going to give it a lot of flavor for, a lot of flavor, and um, it's also going to be a very rich meat. So you shouldn't really need to eat too much in order to really feel full because it's got just great marbling. It's a beautiful cut. Let's see it right here, just I mean, it's gorgeous. So, we're going to have to marinate it because we want to get a lot of locked-in flavor. Also, because it's a thin meat, it's going to be really awesome to marinate. Because that flavor is just going to seep in, and it won't have to penetrate very far, so you can just get just flavorful. So, we're going to get started. First, we're going to add in our soy sauce. Boom. Next, we're going to add in our mirin. And after that, we're going to add in our sesame oil. Now, the sesame oil is going to give the rich, the meat just a little bit of a richer, fattier bit. Also, it has an amazing sesame flavor. And it's going to um, constitute one of the main key parts of the marinade, which, you know, you've got your, your flavorings your, and uh, your fat, and then usually sometimes an acid and a spice. So it's going to fill in one of those. Next, we're going to add in some granulated sugar. Now, we're just going to do this because... It can get a little spicy and the flavors can run away from you a little bit. So adding a little bit of sugar directly onto the meat um, really changes the complexion. Next, we're gonna add in our chili garlic paste. This is delicious stuff. It's going to give it that spiciness, a little bit of that garlickiness, and also that Korean flavor that's very um, recognizable. Now I'm choosing this over something like a sriracha because I find that the chili garlic, one, it's a little bit of a thicker paste and it's more um, textural. Also, the garlic flavor is amazing and I really like that. So I do prefer it over a uh, sriracha. So next we're gonna add in our ground black pepper. Boom. Once again, this is gonna add in another layer of spice and it's gonna be super flavorful. So once we have all that, now it's time for a fresh ingredient, which is one clove garlic diced. So once again, then once you smash it with your knife, you're gonna want to nice peel it. Oh, it smells great. There we go. And just toss that right in there. Now that's what your finished marinade should look like. You can give it a little shake if you want. You wanna make sure that your marinade covers your meat um, and just locks in the flavor from both sides. And um, just gonna give it a little bit more, a little bit more of a shake. Also, you want a nice mix because you don't want one section, one little patch of your marinade to really just be all sesame oil, and that's the only flavor that's infused into your meat. So you do want to make sure that you give it a nice stir or shake, as I'm doing here, before you set it to marinade. So that's what it should look like. Once again, you do want your marinade to cover most of your meat. And there we go. Now we're gonna let it marinate for about three hours. Um, you could marinate for longer, but three hours is a good minimum. Um, of course you could cut it short, but I'd stick with three hours. So um, I'm gonna go pop this in the fridge and I'll catch back with you once it's marinated. All right guys, so now that our beef is uh, marinating, it's time to make our quick pickles. Now I'm doing this just because I want to give our vegetables an extra dimension. So here I have some apple cider vinegar, and I have some prepped out veggies here. I have some cucumber, and I'm just going to add this right in. Boom. And then I'm going to get some of my carrot here. Now my carrot's already been peeled, nicely prepped. And I just have a little baby mandolin, and I'm just going to create some little rounds, some little carrot rounds here. And... These will um, give my carrot a little bit of a better 
texture and make it really nice and thin. So, of course, if you have a regular mandolin, that would work. But I just have this really cute one. Um, so, and then we're just going to give them a little stir in the apple cider vinegar. Just kind of shake them up a little bit. And there we go. Now, we're not going to heat these at all. Um, that's just because I don't want to see the vegetables break down at all. I really like how crisp and crunchy um, fresh carrot and fresh cucumber is. So I want to maintain that beautiful freshness and that beautiful crispness and just add a little bit more crispness with the vinegar and give it that crisp flavor. Um, so that's why I'm not heating these up. Other quick pickle recipes might heat their pickles up, but mine I'm not. And so we're just going to let this sit. Again, just sit until you want to serve it. Um, it's not like they're going to really go bad in like 30 minutes or anything. So, you know, just give them some time to let that vinegar seep in and um, then we should be ready to go. Alright guys, so we're finally to the step where we have our water to a boil and we're ready to cook our soba noodles. Now, these are some great, beautiful brown soba noodles that I have. And soba noodles are very special. They're originally served cold, usually sometimes and um, they're really tasty they're really healthy they've got a bunch of health benefits and uh, they're buckwheat flour noodle and so we're just going to take out a nice amount here you know? and then we're going to take them we're going to be really gentle with them and uh, just trying to make sure that we have enough then we're just going to try to put them into our boiling water here i think i might grab a few more just give them a minute That's good. And uh, we're just going to take the rest of our soba noodles. We're going to save these for later because, you know, I like to eat them. So <laughs> just going to slide those over there. Now our soba noodles are going to take a little while to cook. And uh, funnily enough, I've actually been to a traditional soba noodle restaurant in Japan. And the soba water supposedly contains like the soul of the soba noodle. And so it's traditional to drink that water. Uh, however, I have done it, but um, I, I would not recommend it for those who are not going for the hardcore experience. So we're just going to give these a minute. They're going to take about, I don't know, seven minutes to cook. No, they're going to take a little bit. Uh, you want to make sure that they're nice. Still got a little bit of springiness to them um, before you go to the next step, which is when you take them out and you put them into an ice bath. Here I just have some ice cubes. Um, and I'm just going to take these soap and once they're done, and I'm going to put them into the ice bath to cool them down and to stop the cooking. And because, you know, that's how I'm going to want them when I serve them is nice and ice cold. I'm going to give these another stir. You can see they're just turning out to be just beautiful. Now they're going to take a little while, so you know, make sure to give them their time in the pot, just boiling away. And, um, you know, their soba noodles are going to take a little bit. Now I have prepped out some of my ingredients, and I'm actually going to do a little bit more ingredient prep on here. So, Right here I have some of my enoki mushrooms. Now these are just phenomenal mushrooms. They're super delicious. They've got this nice um, long strand to them with the little tiny caps. Uh, they're just gorgeous mushrooms. I love them. Um, however, they are a little bit intimidating because they still have that uh, growing medium at the bottom. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to take your um, enoki mushrooms and you're going to want to line them up and you're going to want to take off uh, maybe that one. You don't want to get a nice cut. Um, I tend to find that this cut of the mushroom from the growing medium on up to right about there tends to have a little bit of a yucky flavor, kind of dirty. Um, not really the best. You can see it's a little dark when I cut through it. So I'm going to discard that because uh, we don't want that. And then you're just going to get a nice amount of mushrooms. About that much is normally a good portion. Um, and then we can save the rest for later because once again, I really enjoy eating these. They're super delicious. Very flavorful, um, mm, very mushroomy. So, we're gonna give our soba noodles a nice stir here. So, once we have these prepped out, then we can go right back over onto our prep tray. We have over there, clean up our mise en place a little bit, and then get back to our soba noodles. And you know, don't be afraid to try one every so often. You know, if you think they're looking done. Or if your timer's just gone off, make sure to, you know, sample the soba noodle. Make sure that's really done. 
and make sure that that's the preference that you want. This is not going to be like another pasta where you might cook like a little under and then put it into a sauce and cook it again. So you want to make sure that this one is really cooked through because you're putting it into an ice bath which will stop cooking. So, let's see. I'll give it another stir. We're almost done. They're still a little bit too toothsome, a little bit too springy. So they are going to need just a little bit more time. That's another thing, just, you know, take the end of the noodle, rip it off, try it, boom. All right, so I think it's almost about time to uh, pull our soba noodles. You know, they're, they're looking really pretty. You can pull them out, looking really beautiful. Um, you can see that a nice amount has you know, come out of them into the water, and you can see they're looking really pretty. So I'm just going to pop them right into our ice bath here. Boom. And now why I just use ice cubes in my ice bath is because I know that some of the soba water from the noodles will get off into it, so I didn't have to worry about adding too much extra water, because I know there's going to be plenty of water still left on the soba noodles when I add them to my ice bath. Um, I think that's about good. So now that we have our silver noodles here, we're just going to give them a nice little shake. Give them a minute. They're going to cool down, and then we can get to plating. So we have our noodles. Our soba have cooled down. We've got our marinated beef. We have our griddle pan heating up. So it's time to get assembling. Before you cook your um, beef, you want to make sure that you have everything else all in line and all ready to go. So I have my soba noodles here, and I'm just going to let them drip off. Now, in, if you were in Japan, you might have your own little bamboo tray, but uh, unfortunately, I don't have a fancy bamboo soba tray. Um, but I, I certainly would like one. So we're just going to give these a nice, nice little shake off, and we're going to want to put them in. And finally get the last little bit of the soba here. And make sure that you don't get any stray ice cubes. And boom. And I'm done with that. Now we're actually going to have a dressing for our soba noodles here before we even add anything to them. So we're going to add in um, some mirin here, which is going to be, for those of you who don't know what mirin is, mirin is a uh, this kind of sugary syrup that's made from a sake byproduct, I believe, or from this process of sake. Um, and then we're going to add in some soy sauce here. Oh, man. Sauce. Then we're going to add in our sesame oil. Oh, beautiful. And then we're going to add in some chili garlic paste. Now, it's up to you as to how much chili garlic paste you want to add, but I would suggest, you know, a nice amount because it is going to freshen up the noodles and it's going to make them really open up. So, next we're just going to give this a nice little stir. We want to make sure that these get nicely incorporated and really nicely seasoned. Uh, this should be something like a little bit of a salad dressing, but not quite there. So finally you're gonna wanna make sure that they look nice. Oh, boom, beautiful. So now it's time to cook our beef short rib. So here we have our beef short rib, which has been marinating for a minimum of three hours. And we're just gonna pull one out. Oh, look at that, look at that beautiful seasoning. We're just gonna throw a smack dab right onto our little griddle pan. Now, we're only going to do one piece because this is a one-person dinner. Just me. <laughs> so, of course, you could do this outside or on a gas griddle pan, which might give you a little bit of a better flavor, but I have to have the induction right here. So, I'm going to let this cook up. No? <laughs> Doesn't want to flip. That's okay. You want to try to get some nice grill marks on there. Or get a nice sear. Um, once again, this meat's very thin and it is beef, so you can't cook it a little bit rarer. So don't really worry about too much of a time. You want more of a high heat very quick than a uh, long, low heat for a long time. So you want to just get a nice seared off, crispy, um, 
grilled would be, of course be better. You know, like grilled flavor would really, really add something. But um, I'm gonna give it a little bit longer in the pan. Uh, you will also have to worry just a tiny bit about the bones. So remember, this is a bone-in meat, which means that you will have to cook it a little bit longer. But it is very thin, so you'll have to cook it a lot shorter. So kind of remember that when you're cooking this on your internal cooking time. Say that's about done. You know, once again, this is not a very long cook. It's a very quick cook, and you want to get it out the heat. You want to let it rest. It's very tempting to, you know, just cut into it right now, but resting your meat is very important. And so while we let that rest, we're going to actually dress up our soba noodle bowl here. So we're going to take some of our enoki mushrooms. Just going to lay that right in there, really nice and pretty. We're going to take some of our uh, little edamame here, just kind of. Put those nicely in there. I happen to really love edamame, um, so I'm going to put a little bit extra. Next, we're going to have some of our pickles here. And uh, once again, you just want to get a nice amount of pickles. Just pop them right in there. Make sure that, you know, you get as many or as little pickles as you want. I happen to really enjoy them, so I'm going to put quite a few. Oh, look at that. It's beautiful. Now, I think that's about good. I think that we can let our beef's done resting you can see just how rich it is and how beautiful it is you know you're going to want to try to cut it off the bone so you do have this kind of bone cartilage rib right here and you're just going to want to take the meat and you're going to want to try to cut it off of that bone so that is definitely something that you're going to want to do you're not going to want to serve that bone um while you can't eat it off that bone um it tends to be a little bit more, you know, formal and a little bit, a little bit nicer if you uh, don't do that. So now we're just gonna cut a piece, take it, smack it down, and then we're gonna take it, cut a piece, boom, right there, and. And I am cutting this at a little bit of an angle. I'm not going straight down. I am going at an angle. Um, that's just because this meat can be a little tough. So you want to make sure that you try to go um, with the grain a little bit. And you don't try to disrespect the meat and just, you know, slack. Just straight down. And I'm actually going to give this piece a little taste here. Oh, look at that. Oh, delicious. Mmm. Oh. Oh, wow, that's lovely. Mm. Oh, mmm. You just taste all those Asian flavors just, you know, smacked in there. Really flavorful. You can taste that fattiness. This piece happens to be really tender. Mmm. Oh, wow. So, there you have it. That's what it should look like. And we're just going to plate it up with some nice chopsticks here. And there you have it. There's your beef silver bowl, your cold silver bowl, and I uh, hope that you enjoyed cooking along with me. I hope that you enjoy this Matt Avery box, and I hope that you have an amazing dinner. So, I'll catch you on the flip side.